Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are so big and so awesome. Lord, there is no trial that is too big that you can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Lord, it's, we get overwhelmed sometimes, Lord, but, but um, you never do. And Lord, you are our hiding place. So this morning, Lord, as we look into your word, we pray that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to you. Pray that you use Pastor Izzy now to speak to each one of us and to encourage us for this coming week. We ask that now in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, guys, if you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll continue our study through this wonderful letter that Paul wrote. Now, remember, Paul was the guy who founded the church at Corinth on his second missionary journey, and he's actually answering a bunch of questions they had written to him regarding different topics. And so we've been going over some of the things that Paul's been answering in their questions um, that they had for him. And now we come to a part that Paul... I think this is a part when you're a pastor, if you, how many, how many of you heard of the Holy Spirit the, the, or Holy Ghost? If you're raised, I was raised Catholic, it was Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Okay, we, we did this every week and uh, in our prayer time. And so I, you know, to me, the, the idea that God has his Holy Spirit, his Holy Ghost, that is, the Bible says, Jesus said I, to his disciples in John 16, they were all freaked out they're like don't leave us don't leave us he says i tell you it's to your advantage that i go away as if i go to the father who was he going to send this, his holy spirit to be with us and the thing was that the disciples didn't understand at the time was that when jesus was on the earth in his humbled state you know it says he humbled himself to take on the flesh of a man you know he went from being with god you know in the beginning what's it say in john 1 was the word, the word was with God. The word was God, and, it, and the and, and he was with God, and he he became flesh. It says in verse sixteen, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld him full of grace and truth. And so Jesus, this this living word that came down, the problem with being down here in this fleshly tent that he put on was he could only be in one place at a time, but he was used to being in his. God state where he could be everywhere at once. You know, that's one of the nice things uh, about being God. You can be omnipresent. You can be everywhere at once. And his spirit could do the same thing. He says, guys, it's to your advantage I go. Because when I go, I'll send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will be with you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. He'll guide you. He'll lead you. He'll, he, he'll comfort you. Now, how many can give, give an amen that the Holy Spirit is really the one that's the best comforter? When, when you come to, when your faith deepens and you learn that the Spirit of God is not just some esoteric thing way out there, He's real, and His Spirit comes and comforts us. You know, we can go through some hard times down here. And, you know, some of, them, some, some of you lost loved ones and you're just, heart is mourning. And, you know, the Spirit of God is the best comforter I know. You know, the, His Spirit just has... Things he can, he can speak to us in ways that are deeper than words. But he doesn't even need words. He can just like impress on you the answer and you know. And better than, now I'm going to share this with you this morning because he even gives gifts from his spirit. And one of the gifts is, is called the, the gift of tongues. A gift to speak in a different language. And now I call this cheating. For those of you that have studied foreign languages, you know how, how many of you have taken a foreign language in school? How'd it go? Not good. <laughs> I always get the same reaction. My wife liked it. She took Spanish. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, for some folks, there, there's a few that like it. You know, I grew up speaking Italian first and then learned English. Quite a burdensome language. But uh, you have to do what you got to do. And I think, you know, Lord, if I could have just gotten English as a tongue... You know, like, God, you could have just given me, like, the gift of tongues where all of a sudden I'm fluent in English without having to study. I would have really liked that. Because that, that, that's what I call cheating. But in a good way, cheating. Now, can God help you speak another language without, I mean, without actually going to school for it? Can he just, because, by the way, in the book of Acts, that's what we learn is one of the first manifestations of God's Spirit 
when Jesus left, he, see, he told them, you guys wait in prayer. And they were praying in the upper room. And you remember, it says that the Spirit of the Lord came and appeared as tongues of fire. Now, I don't know what it looked like exactly, but I'm sure, you know, with modern technology and, you know, sci-fi effects and stuff, they could probably make a pretty good, you know, imagination of what it looked like. But who would like to have seen the real deal? Like, I mean, I, I, was it a tongue or was it like just a wisp of fire? Or was it like a flame and... Whatever it was, it was the, a manifestation, a showing of God's Spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but I dig the idea that you could actually see a tongue of fire that came, it says, and it rested on each of the disciples. And what happened with those guys when after that, the, the, that fire of the Lord touched them, it says they, they were endued with power to be His witnesses. And they went out into the streets and they began to proclaim, it says, the mighty deeds of God. They were all talking about the great things God did. Interestingly enough, though, the whole lot of the group of them, they were mostly Galileans. They were from, they're, they're, we'd say Jewish boys, you know, raised there in, in Israel. And, and the people were gathered from all over the world at that time because you had had the Feast of Passover leading into Pentecost now. And by the way, people would make a trek to go all the way to Israel, to the, to the temple, from all over, from Rome, Greeks all over the world, the, the known world at the time, they'd all come together there for, uh, they, this wasn't like jump a plane and fly over. You know, it, these guys planned their, their pilgrimage for years. I mean, this is a long trek. And when they would get there, at pa they usually aimed for Passover time. That was the big holy holiday. But that was, that was 50 years, sorry, 50 years, 50 days earlier. Pentecost comes later. And they were and, and Jesus had already been sacrificed after the Passover. Remember, at, he ate the Last Supper, the Passover, and said, this is the last meal I have with you till I eat it anew with you in my, in, in my Father's kingdom. And so he, he shows himself alive over the next 40 days with many convincing proofs. And then he tells him, you guys wait in Jerusalem till you receive the power from the Holy Spirit. And so they waited. Now, I can only assume from doing the math, since he appeared with many convincing proofs, the scripture says, over the next 40 days after he rose, that takes up 40 days, plus he was three days in the grave, that's 43 days from Passover. So there's one week, seven days they had to wait and pray. And so, uh, uh, one week later, on Pentecost, day 50, what happens? The tongues of fire show up. And these guys get the best present ever. They don't have to study language at all. And they go out into the street and they start proclaiming the mighty deeds of God. But the people, since they were from everywhere around the world, the book of Acts tells us the people were stunned. They were going, how is it that we hear these men speaking in our own, what? Our own tongue, our own language. They're, you know, Cretes, Arabic. They're, all, all these different languages represented, they're all speaking our language. Like our native tongue. Now, if you don't speak a different language, it might not seem like any big deal to you, but if you grew up like I did, speaking Italian, someone comes up and starts speaking to you in Italian, my brain goes into relax mode when they go to my first tongue. It's like, probably for you guys that just speak English, you'd be like, you go over to another country, they're speaking a bunch, bunch of people speaking different languages, you don't understand a thing going on, and all of a sudden you hear one person say, good morning, how you doing? You know, and you're like, I know that, you know. That guy must be from, well, at least he speaks English. And your brain goes, ah, I identify that with that. Well, that's what they did in the Bible. They went, we hear them speaking our own language. And, of course, you know what happens, right? A great revival breaks out. Many people come to Christ. And that's just the first splashdown. I, I call it the stone hitting the water and out the ripple begins, you know. The gospel starts to just spread and spread. But it will happen because God gave a gift that is beyond our natural ability. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't they had to go study. I'm not saying you couldn't have learned the language, but how, how, how can you learn it just in an instant like that and become fluent? That's a gift. Now, there's a lot more gifts that I think are even cooler. In fact, Paul's going to tell us that that gift is actually the least of the gifts. And I think that one's a pretty good one. But it's at the bottom. Just to get you ready for the chapter, there's a lot better ones. There's the, I mean, that's just like, just a bit, intro level, easy kind. 
What could be better than that? Let me show you today. This is 1 Corinthians 12 is so cool. What, what Paul now tells them, he says, now I, I've got some stuff to tell you guys. And I don't want you, he says, I don't want you to be unaware of these things. He says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be unaware. He says, you know that when you were pagans, you were led astray, it, it, it says, to, to mute idols. In other words, you know, idols that couldn't even speak. You were, you were following after him. He says, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by what? The Holy Spirit. The first identifying mark that you have God's Spirit is that you can call Jesus. You, and by the way, this means Jesus is your Lord. Because even Satan recognizes Jesus as Lord. He's not saying he's, Satan doesn't say he's my Lord, my master. He's, he, he acknowledges that. But Paul is, in, he's writing to Christians. The context is, of course, you understand you calling Jesus your master. You call on him as Lord. You can't do that except that God gave you his spirit. It's just something about our spirit inside of us needs a little bit of help from God's spirit to acknowledge who Christ really is. And so God goes, here's your first gift. Just so you know. And this is a great thing for the ones that are just starting out. They go, I don't know if God's Spirit's with me. I said, can you say Jesus is your Lord? This is a good one. Bob, can you do that? Jesus is your Lord. If you do that, then I know you already have the Spirit. Because, you know, you don't get to come to the Lord. The Bible says, no man comes to God except that, what, what is it that draws the man to God according to the Scripture? The Holy Spirit. So it's the Spirit's work in our lives. This is the part, I hate to say, our culture is so, we've intellectualized faith too much. Past the point of leaving room for God's Spirit to be at work. You know, it's more like, well, we worked it out for God. We got this plan and this strategy to get saved souls, and we're going to do this campaign, and we're going to do that. And You know what God thinks of all that, right? Let's say, many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord shall direct his steps. How does the Lord direct our steps anyway? By his Spirit. His Holy Spirit is what was given to us. It was his Spirit at work to draw us to Christ in the beginning. So, why do we buck against his Holy Spirit? I mean, have you ever been to churches where they don't really want to talk about his Spirit? Well, we don't, you know... Yeah, that was good for back then. They needed it back then, but we don't, we don't need those things today. So the Spirit's not a lot. They actually come up with theologies. Did you know that there's whole sects of Christianity that, that I could teach this chapter to right from the Bible, and they'd say, well, that was good for them back then, but it's not for today. I'm like, why, you don't need comfort today? You don't need His peace today? How many need the comfort that the Holy Spirit gives today? The peace that Jesus talked about. The, 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 the guidance. Anyone here could use his guidance? Oh, no, but I'm sorry. He isn't around today. That was only for the early believers. Didn't, didn't you know that? Baloney. Okay? I, I say to you, baloney. The, and, and I say it <laughs> emphatically. I would say other things, but I get in trouble for it. But that's, that is hogwash, man. That is not true. Je the Bible tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and what? Forever. Does, does anyone find it incongruent to think that the Holy Spirit was different back then than he is today? The Spirit of God, would he have changed? I mean, let's just use a, like, it, Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and the Spirit of God doesn't change over time. It, the Spirit of God is still there. And I submit to you the Spirit of God is still available giving all of the gifts that Paul's going to mention. And by the way, this isn't an exhaustive list. There's more gifts than what he shares here. But, you know, I think we overcomplicated the Holy Ghost. We, we took away from God's present, the gift. God goes, I got a gift to give you. It's salvation through my Son. And a lot of Christians come to that knowledge that Christ died for them and they're like, yeah, I'm, you know, best present ever. But that's not the only present in God's kingdom. He goes, that's just the first one. Then, then with that present comes the present of, of his spirit. 
This is a seal, Paul writes to the church. He says, God gives his Holy Spirit to seal us until the day of redemption. It's like a mark that says, God's property, sealed, belongs to me. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read that, I was like, yeah. I'm, does anyone think that's a pretty good deal? We're like marked with a seal. It, it, it's, a, it's a spiritual seal. It says, this belongs to God. You're God's property. Did you know that? He gave you his spirit to say, special, marked out for me. That, that's mine. Now, I don't know. Our culture, like, they, they don't want to tell you this? Why? Because some people say, well, but it's invisible. You can't see it. Well, gravity's invisible. You can't see that either, but it still, still has an effect on you. You can't just say, because something's invisible, it's not real. We know that that's not true. The things of the Spirit, though that we don't see them with, with the, you know, our actual physical sight, doesn't mean that they're not real. And some of these gifts, man, I tell you, these gifts are awesome. Let, let me show you what Paul goes on to tell them. He says, now therefore... He says in verse 4, there are a variety of gifts, but it is the same Spirit. Okay, one Holy Spirit, just a variety. I mean, come on, parents, we think of different gifts for our kids, don't we? We don't give the same gift to each kid that we have. I mean, that it wouldn't, my family, it wouldn't work. I got a son, three daughters. My son wanted a bicycle. The girls said they wanted a bicycle after he got a bike. No. Daniel rode his bike till the tires were bald. And then we had to put new tires. And then he rode that till they were bald. I mean, he would ride through the rubber, through the little canvas part that's inside there, down to the tube to pop it. That's how much he'd ride his bike. I remember Joy, I got to have a bike too, Dad. I want a bike like Daniel. You sure, honey? Sorry, honey. This is, it's embarrassing being the pastor's kid because you, you always, all your, your life's on display. But she had to have the bike with the tie, you know, new. And her bike sat against the house. Really pretty. Under the eave. Didn't even look. Daniel's was rusty, scratched. We called it old rusty. It was scratched, dinged up, all, you know, beat up. Hers, I went out one day. It had been like a month. And you know those little nubs that are on the tire that were the brand new, you know, the little injection molded little things that stick out, that rim on the uh, seam of the top of the, they were still there. I was like, I think I wasted my money. You know, but there were other presents that I got for her that she used all the time that wouldn't suit him. Now, as an earthly father, the Bible says, as earthly parents, we try to give good gifts to our children, right? But what's it say in Luke's gospel that our heavenly father gives to us? What good gift does he give to us? little quiz. The Holy Spirit. He gives us all the Holy Spirit. And it's only one Holy Spirit given to all of us. But Paul says that same Holy Spirit has many varieties or manifestations of his Spirit. Just There's one Spirit, but a lot of diversity in how he shows up. A, a lot of cool different expressions. And this is a problem for some people because they like everything in little cute little boxes of understanding. They want God's spirit is like this big and he fits all the stuff that he has goes in this box. I said, I don't know to tell you this, but my God is really big. Like bigger than, well, than, uh, he's bigger than I could ever be. He's huge. I mean, and there's nothing that could contain him. Not even my understanding. So today what I'm going to share with you is just scratching the surface of some of the variety of gifts that he gives. And it's not an all-inclusive list. Maybe if I have time, I'll take you to a few other passages to uh, show, show you some of the other gifts that are listed in the Scripture besides these ones. But Paul must have wanted these guys, these, these believers that have been only been in Christ like a year and a half, to at least know about these gifts. Let me show you which gifts he tells them. But he says, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. Verse 5, there are a variety of ministries, but the same Lord. There are a variety of effects, but it is the same God who works all things in all persons. Let's don't get confused. It's the same God at work in all of us. 
But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. God gave His Spirit for the common good. Whatever gift you are given, it's not just for you. It's to help out the whole body. For the common good. And then he, Paul says, For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit. Another is given a word of knowledge through the same Spirit. Now what's the difference between a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge? Because in our culture, I don't know, the teens don't ever get this one. They're like, it's just, they always tell me it's the same. I go, it's not the same. A word of knowledge, let me explain it. A word of knowledge in a, in a okay, I'll pick an example. Like you're driving your car and um, the, the light comes on. I call it the idiot light, you know, that one. They don't put gauges anymore. They just put a little like beep, 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 you know. And uh, you don't know what's wrong. You just know something's wrong with the car. Okay, you, you, you say, well, this thing gives me knowledge. There's something wrong. It doesn't even tell you what's wrong. But it's something wrong. Okay, so when that light goes off, and maybe there's steam coming out of the hood, you could say, well, yeah, I, I, I now know this thing. Something is wrong with the car. <laughs> Great. Now, what some people will do, just teenagers, mind you, they keep driving Now, if you, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is wisdom is the application of knowledge. Knowledge is just knowing something. I know there's something wrong with the car. Wisdom is, what do I do? Granted that there is something wrong with the car. And what's the answer? Pull over. <laughs> Find out what's going on. Under the hood. I mean, you, you might open the hood and go, oh, there's like a, there's, oh, look at that water squirting up. It's kind of greenish and going and hitting the hood and. Spraying everywhere. You leave the, leave the engine running. Is this a good idea to leave it going? No, why? I mean, knowledge is, well, there's a problem. I can see the problem. Yeah, you identified the problem. You know what it is. But wisdom is knowing what to do about the problem. How to respond, granted that that hose is leaking and that your radiator fluid is spraying all over your engine. And, uh, you know... Do you open it up right away while it's really hot? Those of you mechanics know, <laughs> big no-no, under pressure. You know, you got to wait till it cools down. You got to release the pressure. Not too many folks carry a spare hoses, but, you know, if you grew up in the desert like I did, we actually carry all that stuff in the back of the truck just because you're out four-wheeling out in the middle of the Arizona desert. There's no store to stop by. You go and, you know, or you learn to cut back the tube and see if you can stretch it enough to get you, you know, limp it home. And fill, but you don't just drive it on empty, you refill it, right? Even if you just have water, just to keep it cool enough. So what would happen if you drove without the water? Without the energy? Do you know that there is a whole generation, they don't know what will happen. They weren't raised like I was on a farm. They don't know about the engine that will actually seize up and overheat. And get fried. Great way to ruin the engine. But, but it was just one light on the dash, they'll tell me. It was just a little, a little light came on. What was the problem? That light means stop, idiot. It's called idiot light. Stop. <laughs> Even if you don't know exactly what's going on under the hood, it still means what? Pull over. But see, this is the difference between <laughs> having knowledge and having wisdom. Now to you, there is a gift given by God's Spirit. And some of you, by the way, are all these gifts given to all of us? No. no. Paul's going to go on at the end of the chapter and explain clearly. I won't get that far today, but just, just to get you in the mindset. Certain ones of us are given different gifts. And you go, but that's not fair. I wanted all of them. <laughs> Good. You want them all, but God will give you the ones that he knows suit you. <laughs> and sometimes you're going to give the gift to someone else around you that you're going to need their participation in your life but that's his way of making sure you're covered and that they get to use their gift you know maybe they're going to be the one to help you out now he says there's another gift of the spirit it's called faith this is a really cool one because some people just have a great measure of faith no matter what's going on they're like it's okay god's in control and if you don't have that gift in great proportion you know nothing wrong with asking for it 
But even if you don't get it, make sure you get around someone who does have it. I just suggest that as a hint for getting through this life. It's always good to be around someone who has the gift of faith. Because when you're having a bad faith day, you know, I call it your, your faith meter's a little low, and you get around them, they're like, oh, it's okay, God's, God's got it. I know it's a big trial, but God's got it. He's in control. Isn't it nice to have those kind of people around when, when your faith meter's hitting the, the low numbers and they come along and go, no, it's good. It like pulls your needle up a little, you know. Let me help you out. And God has given that as a gift. Some people just have a great measure of faith. Now, to others, he said there is a gift of healing. This is one when I was a new Christian, I thought, you know, these other ones seem kind of invisible and they're in the mind and you're thinking knowledge and wisdom and faith, that's like in your heart. But gift of healing, like that's kind of like outside your body. Like you pray over someone, they get healed. That, I was like, God, that's, you know, these other ones, like, I don't even know how to see them. But if someone was like, like in the Bible when they were lame, right, and they couldn't walk, and they had never walked, and they were brought before Jesus. Remember that guy they lowered through the roof? His buddies went to the trouble to, to go climb the house and tear a, tear a hole in the roof, and they lowered the guy in on a pallet, right? Right before Jesus, right? And the guy had never walked. Now, I don't know if you can picture this in your mind, but I love that story, because can you just picture a guy he's never walked? How big are his leg muscles going to be? Nothing, right? They're going to be like little... Just a bone with some skin and a little, like, pencil leg, you know. And the guy is laying there in front of him, and Jesus goes, your sins are forgiven you. And they were, oh, who's this guy that says he forgives sins? You know, how dare he? And he goes, just so that you know, the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. Just so you know, to help your faith. He goes, rise up and walk. Take your pallet. Get up and walk. And what happened? when Jesus said those words to that man? It says his legs were instantly restored. Okay. He had never walked. I mean, Jesus made the muscle. This is also cheating, by the way. I mean, <laughs> you think about this. Those of you that have gone to the gym to work on your leg muscles, you know, this is like, most people are like, I hate leg day. It's the worst day, you know. <laughs> I hate leg day. This guy never did leg day in his life, and all of a sudden, he goes from skinny leg to... <laughs> And he gets up, picks up his pallet, and walks out. Now, would, if I had a time machine, would any of you volunteer would go with me to sit in that house that day? To, who, who would like to see that? Like, just, just like before your eyes, you just maybe front row. Can I just squeeze in and just, like, watch the guy hit the floor? And you, now, we'd be cheating because we know what's coming. But do, do you think it would help your faith to see the guy? See Jesus talking to him, see his little skinny legs, and then all of a sudden, phoom, and then he gets up and he walks. I mean, what a, that'd be a rush. But see, some people say, that only happened back then. Except I've had the privilege to pray for people and have it happen today. With my hand on their legs, and God restore it, and it freaked me out. I'm not going to tell you I'm so spiritual. Oh, I just so and Forget that, man. The first time it happened, I went, whoa, oh, praise the Lord. Whoa. You know, like, I can't, huh? you know. And then after that, I was like, sorry, I complained, Lord. Because I was complaining. I'm going to be honest with you. I was like, Lord, you know, I lead people to you. I talk about you all the time. I help build up people's faith. But that's all, like, invisible stuff. I never see, I want to see some real stuff. Just, you probably never talk to God like this, but this is, you know. My Sicilian side comes out once in a while. I'm like, Lord, look. It's not fair. I mean, you're real, but how do I know? I, I want to see some. <laughs> I, you know, these other guys, there's this one guy. He's like totally hardly been a Christian like a couple of days. I've been a Christian a lot longer. And, and he prayed for someone that got healed just like that. I was saying, you know, this is a, by the way, that's a big mistake. You err when you compare yourselves, it says, one with another. Big, mistake one, I shouldn't have done that. But God, in his infinite sense of humor, oh, really, you want to do that? Okay, you can. First time it happened, I was like, <gasps> okay, I know you're real. 
If you want to use that guy, that would be great. I'll just keep preaching. That freaked me out. I mean, that was the weirdest thing. At, you know, everyone says that they would want to do it. When you say, hey, how many of you would like to pray for someone and see him get healed right then? It's funny. In Christian circles, I can usually get quite, quite a few volunteers. The irony to me is, is that when it does happen, some of them will go away going, well, it was maybe they didn't really have that problem. Or maybe the <laughs> guy comes riddled, riddled with cancer. We had one guy come. He was, his name was Jack. He had his um, spine all messed up, and he was supposed to have these rods put into it to have surgery on Wednesday. It was a s Sunday service, and he was slated for surgery, and his back was all, like, you know, messed up, and they were going to insert these rods into his back to straighten the spine and it didn't sound good and Dottie you know our dear Dot that we're praying for she's usually up here on the worship team and she got a cut on her leg and she's asking for prayer for her she goes why don't we just pray for him <laughs> and, okay sure you know and the guy's in such pain he couldn't he couldn't even I mean, the pain it caused to, to tie his shoe, to even get, like, to get to his foot. You know, no matter what he did, if he put his foot up to get to his he just couldn't tie his shoe. And, and uh, so we started praying, and I said, hey, Dot, you know. Uh, she goes, well, you, you tell that story where you pray for that guy. And, and uh, I said, yeah. I said, we were praying, and I was complaining. I mean, fervently praying. Oh, Lord, you know, that's what we do when we pray fervently. Sometimes we complain. Lord, you never used me. I wish you could do something down here. Just forgive me my sins, Lord, and, and use me however you want to use me. I remember praying that. And right in that very moment, there was this warm tingle that shot down my arm. This, this elderly lady, Claire, put her hand on my back and touched me, and she started praying with us. And it was like, the best thing I can say is it felt like electricity, kind of like warm, tingling electricity. It went down my shoulders, through my hands, right into this guy's leg, and he got healed right then. His, his muscle, his, his tendons all reattached in my hand. It was freaked me out. I was like, <gasps> and then Dust says, can we pray for Jack? And I put my hand on him, and all of a sudden my hand's getting really that same thing. I'm like, I felt this before. You can't, I can't turn it on. I don't know where, you know. Like, I don't have the on-off switch figured out yet. I just know that God can do it when he wants. So I'm just a vessel that he uses. But, but when it started to happen, I was like, oh, something's happening, you know. I go, come here, Dot. <laughs> she, she was behind me over here. I said, come here. And I put her hand on his back because she, she wanted to see God do something cool. And I said, oh, cool. come on, put your hand there. And so she put her hand on his back, and I put my hand over her hand. Just like that other lady put her hand on my back. And so I, I have my hand resting on, on, on her hand, and all of a sudden I feel again, uh-oh, here it comes. My hand's getting really hot. And Jack, Jack starts going, huh. And he, he stands upright, you know, like he, he could. He was all bent, like, kind of funny, you know, and couldn't stand up in the pain. And all of a sudden he just kind of sighed, like, huh. And he stood up. And he looks at me and goes, what did you do? And he looks at Dottie, right at Dottie. What did you do? She goes, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. I said, did you feel that, Dot? She goes, uh-huh. She goes, I go, that's just the Lord touching him. So the guy is like, what did you do? And she goes, no, I didn't do nothing. It was the Lord. So he goes to the doctor, and the doctor has to do the pre-surgery um, x-ray, you know, to get everything ready, and it's like this 3D thing, and they got to get this precise, you know, when you're putting them rods in next to the spine. And they go in, and... The doc says, so how you been? You know, because he was in such excruciating pain just two weeks before when he was there. And he goes, well, it's funny you should mention that. And he, he bends over, his old guy, bends over and ties his shoe and stands back up. He goes, I can tie my shoe. It doesn't hurt at all. And the doctor goes, well, that's pretty weird. Maybe it's like pinched a nerve and you're gone totally, you know, you don't feel nothing. Something could be really bad. That's a bad sign. We got to get a... We got to get in there and check this out, right? So the doctor does the full 3D thing they do with the, you know, the image thing and comes in and goes, Jack, I don't know how to tell you this, but 
you're spying. And he takes the thing and he shows him on the computer, look at this, and rotates it. And shows, your spine is totally correct. It's like all the discs that were crushed are, are, are whole. What did you do? And he goes, oh, I was in this church in Hawaii on a beach, and they prayed, this lady prayed for me. So he called Dottie right away. See, you know when you pray for me? Well, the doctor says, I don't need surgery today. And I've been, you know, this has been leading up for years. He was going to get surgery. And she's like, and he's going, you heal me. You heal me. She's going, not me. Not me. The Lord. The Lord did that. I'm just a, so she comes, she comes to church the next Sunday. You can't believe this. Remember when we prayed for church? Well, he called me and said he's healed. You know, and she goes through the whole thing. And I'm thinking, you know, it kind of builds our faith a little when God works by his spirit. Just a cool thing when he just like touches somebody and does it just, do you think it just built up the guy's faith that got lowered down on the pallet? Or did it build up his buddy's faith that were up on the roof? They're probably going, good, we don't have to carry you home. You know, because they carried him. Remember, they carried their buddy all the way to see Jesus. And they couldn't get in because of the crowd, so they made their way to the rooftop. I mean, these guys really cared about their friend. But I bet they were super stoked when he was walking home with them. You know, can you imagine how their faith felt that they were seeing, wow, it worked. I mean, I don't know about you, but they're probably going, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. If, there any, if their faith is anything like a normal person, they might have been thinking, well, what do we got to lose? You know, we hear this Jesus can do pretty cool things, but we ain't going to know if we don't try. Let's try. You know, one of them must have had enough inkling to say, let's give it a shot. And the other guys agreed. Now, these are true friends. They went to see what could Jesus do. Would you do this for your friend? You had a friend that was paralyzed and thought, well, let's see. Maybe Jesus will heal him. I mean, that's not hard for God. He, can, he, can, he, took, he, he took the blind man, made him to see. He took, he took the lame man, made him to walk. You know, it, it just, to, to the Lord, none of this is hard. But see, Paul's writing to them saying, there's a variety of manifestations of the Spirit. But only how many spirits at work? One. Let's keep the credit to the one that it's due, the Holy Spirit. It's not us. It's not, not Dottie did it or I did it. This guy Jack had it kind of misconstrued. He was, it was, he was new, this whole faith thing to him. So he's like, it's you guys did it. And he showed up like a couple months later and goes, you guys, you, you and her, you guys healed me. I go, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. There's only one spirit. He gets the glory. All the credit goes to the Lord. It's him that was at work. So he gives the gifts of healing. Now there's another gift he gives called the gift of miracles. Like this gift. This is a really cool gift. You know, when he does stuff like multiplies the bread and the loaves, the fishes, feeds the 5,000, or multiplies our food in our food day when we're feeding and the agape breakfast and we don't have enough and God goes, that's okay. And he keeps scoom, you know, spooning it out and it keeps working. And you keep looking at the line going, this is a big line. And the Lord goes, it's okay. That's just a miracle, God. How many believe God does those things, by the way? It's too hard for him, right? He goes, oh, gee, that's a toughie. <laughs> can't do that. I can only heal lame people, but I can't, I can't multiply goulash in the pot, you know? <laughs> Nothing is hard for God, okay? Remember, we're talking about God and his spirit here. So just as long as you remember that, all these gifts, you just start going, oh, yeah, that should be no problem. Another gift, prophecy. The ability to speak. A prophet, by the way, never says his own mind. He always starts with the lead-in line. Thus saith who? The Lord. He's just speaking on behalf of the Lord. You know, this is what God would say. Very handy to have someone around in your life that has the gift of prophecy. Especially if you're going, I just wish I knew what God wanted me to do. And they go around them, they go, oh, by the way, the Lord told me to tell you, he wants you to do this. Thus says the Lord. I don't know why, it keeps coming to my mind. The Lord says, you should, and you're like, oh, cool. I mean, I've been really struggling with that. I'm really glad you, glad you um, use your gift. By the way, could someone have that gift and not tell you? Oh, yeah, there's some stingy Christians. Like, I got the spirit, but I ain't sharing. You crumb. You're supposed to share. 
That's what this is all about. The gifts of the Spirit are given for the common good, not for you to hog to yourself. They don't actually do any good when you hog them. They'll only do good when the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit is used in your life. It operates and flows through your life to help others around you. That's why it was given. Now, I'm, oh, I've gone plenty long already, sorry. I get excited about the gifts. There's so many good, pre it's like present day, you know, like when you go to Christmas and the stuff's under the tree. I don't know if you were a kid and you remember this, but we didn't get tired just because there was more presents. We like keep them coming. You know? <laughs> just keep, we were sad when they ran out. Except when I talk about the spirit and, and the gifts of the spirit, this is better than any Christmas day there is. I mean, this is spiritual Christmas and the presents just keep coming. You know, this is just the, this is just the first few. Of the few boxes we're unopening today, these are just a few of the things that the Spirit of God gives as a gift. But there's more. And some of you, you know, you're going, well, that's a good present, but I, it doesn't really suit me. Do you think God knows what present suits you? Amen? Amen? He knows exactly which one will fit you. I, I'll just finish this little paragraph here. He says, there's another gift. To another, there's effecting of miracles. Another, the gift of prophecy. Verse 10, another, the distinguishing of spirits. In other words, you can get yeah, that discerning that King James says, you're able to tell when someone has an evil spirit or a good spirit. You have no, there's no outward way of just, you just go around that person and you know. That's a gift. Then to another, there's the gift of various kinds of tongues. And to another, there's the gift of interpretation of tongues. You can hear a foreign language and you actually know what they're saying without ever having studied. Now, that's cheating too, but in a good way. But one and the same Spirit, verse 11 says, works all these things, distributing to each one of us individually just as He wills. You know who gets to choose which presents get given out? The Lord. Not us. We can ask. I always tell people, look, they go, oh, I wish I had that gift. You know, you start talking about certain gifts of the Spirit. Some people, I can tell, they're, they're inclined for that gift. They, they're, they're, their ears perk up. They're like, ooh, I'd like that. You know? Anyone here would like to have the ability to just have words of wisdom without ever having to study and know the stuff? Just God just gives you the answer. Fridge isn't working. It's broken. You don't know what to do. You don't want to do it the hard way like I did, YouTube University, watching 50 different YouTubes to find how to do the factory reset to make the thing work again. A word of wisdom would have been really handy. Just push and hold these two buttons for 10 seconds until it goes deet deet, and push this button three times, and then it will factory reset. I had to watch a lot of YouTube to learn that. But if you had a gift of word of wisdom, you went, oh, just try this, hold these. You could have spared me like six hours of watching YouTube. It wasn't fun either. You know those, those guys that do YouTubes on appliance repair? They're not very good. They're not interesting either. They're not even funny. They're like the dullest people on the planet. Let me make a video how to repair this appliance. Please first make sure it's unplugged. Then do this. And then, you know, is the guy ever going to tell you how to fix the thing, you know? I'm going to have to remake YouTube videos on how to fix appliances with a little, you know. To just Well, a word of wisdom would have been nice. It's a gift. Now, some of you are going, I'll take that one. And some of you are going, oh, I like the one of miracles, or I like the one of wisdom, or knowledge, or, or, or being able to, to, to interpret a language that you didn't even study. That's cheating, but good. You could have a great gift. Now, is that... I've already told you these are not all the gifts that the Bible tells us that the Spirit gives. There's a whole bunch more in Romans 12, Mark's Gospel. Mark tells us some really cool things that the Spirit does for us. Jude, on, uh, you want to hear another one, come out to the Bible study this week on Tuesday night. And we'll be doing the last part of Jude. And Jude gives one of the sweetest gifts of the Spirit. He only does one. He covers one of them. That's a good one that, that the Spirit gives to us. And it's something that sometimes uh, our American Western Christianity overlooks, but it's not overlooked in global Christianity. In other places in the world, 
where they really have to rely on God to get through the day. They have harder, you know, economic times. They have harder times. Maybe they're persecuted for their faith. They're, they're much more grateful for that gift that Jude mentions. I'm not telling you what it is because I've got to leave you hanging on something. Come out next week and we'll, we'll go over it and, uh, or come to Tuesday night and come see it. Let's stop here and we'll pray that God would distribute the gifts that he has for you to you today if you don't already have one and that, uh, and that you would... Do anyone here interested in having a gift of God's Spirit? You, you say, I'll take it. You know, some of you already have them, I already know, so you're allowed to ask for more, but my admonishment to you is use the one you got. Whatever gift you do get, I don't want you just to be a gift grabber and then say, I got it, but I ain't going to use it. Don't, don't leave it like the tires of my daughter's bike, okay? All pretty and nice, but you didn't use it. That's not what these are about, okay? You're, you're, you're going to get the gift so you can... Do like my son did. Ride that bike till that thing, the tires are falling off. You know? Some people are like, you teach all the time. You just keep teaching about God. Well, guess what gift he gave me? Teaching. And I don't want to get in front of him and, and have him say, you wicked, lazy sla slave. You know, I gave you that gift, but you, did, you just went and buried it. That, remember that parable Jesus taught? That's not a good thing. I want him to go, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, you took what I gave you, you, you had, the, you had the, the five talent and you made it into ten. Or you had the one, not the one, that guy, he buried his. The guy that had the ten, he made twenty, right? He said, y you, do, you use what he gave you and he says, you're going to get rewarded. You were entrusted with this small thing, now, now be in charge, he says, over these ten cities. I go, there's something to being faithful with what you're given. So those of you that already have gifts of the Spirit, my word to you is, Use it this week. Use that gift because you're, you're given that gift to help build up others. And those of you that want a gift, maybe you don't know what gift it is God has for you. It's, he that, it's him that gets to decide. Just say, God, give me what you know suits me. He'll pick the right one for you. He'll pick the perfect one for you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can come together and we can seek you in these days. We can ask you to give to us, your children, the things that you desire to impart, Lord, the things of your spirit. I pray that you would give to Bob, our new, new young man in the faith, that, the gifts that he needs, and to each person here, Lord, whatever they might need from your Holy Ghost today, we ask that you would impart it to them, that we go away from here strengthened and equipped for what lies ahead in our, in our upcoming week, Lord, as only you know what we're going to face. Help us, Lord, through this journey. Give us those things of your spirit we need. And we ask that in Jesus, Jesus Christ, your precious son's name, we pray. And everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. If you'd like prayer, Herb, raise your hand. He's right over there. That guy has a gift of praying, which is one of the gifts of the spirit. Intercession, it's called. And he'll pray for you. And, uh, and if you do have some friends or anybody that you know that's up at the hospitals, he's our chaplain. He's all licensed to go in there. He can even go in the parts that, you know, visitors aren't supposed to. He's allowed to go and pray over folks. So if you need someone prayed for, let him know, and, uh, and he'll be glad to go up there. Or if you, can't, if you don't have his number, call me, and I'll give it to you, and we'll get you set up, okay? So let's stand and sing a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.